Pastor Robert Carter here at the All Nation Church in Springfield, Massachusetts. It is such a blessing, such a privilege to have you join us for a worship service today. And uh, before we go any further, I just want to uh, do what I always say to you. Go ahead and share the stream and also like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. You may be asking, why should I like, like the page on Facebook and why should I subscribe? But what we'll be doing, we'll be putting out fresh content uh, on a regular basis and we'd like for you to be notified of the, 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 this fresh content. So go ahead and like us on Facebook and also subscribe on YouTube. But today, we're going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. We're going to be um, listening to a, a, a session of praise and worship. There's going to be a time of prayer, and you can be involved in what is going on. And also, there will be a word from the Lord. This morning, I'll be speaking to you from the topic, Mistaken Identity. So I want you to be engaged, be involved in worship, and we will have a blessed time in the presence of the Lord. So go ahead, share the stream sit back, be involved in worship. Thank you for joining us. Let's go into our sanctuary. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, God, for your kindness, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. We thank you that, God, in spite of the fact that you're the God of this whole world, God, you're our personal Lord and Savior, God. And we say thank you. Thank you for being a personal Savior to us, God. In the midst of all this confusion, God, we can say that your identity is rooted in you, Lord God. And only that, Lord God. You are forever with us, Lord God, and you are Emmanuel, God. It doesn't matter what we have been through this week, Lord. You are right here with us, God, and you are about to make things all brand new, Lord God. God, whatever was frustrating us, oh God, this is a time of renewal, God. Whatever, oh Lord God, calls us to rejoice, God, we're going to continue to rejoice, God. Because, God, you are working everything out, God, according to your good will. Jesus. Yes, God, we give you praise, we give you honor, God, we exalt you. God, we lift the name of God, God, we, we declare in this place, oh Lord, that you, Lord God, you bring us all this transformation, God, you bring us all this peace, God, you can know, Lord God, you're broken, God, God, you're bringing great things to God. God, we thank you, God, that you're listening and you're answering prayers right now. We thank you, God.
and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for since your brother was dead and is alive, he was lost and is found. The only part of the word by his name is the name. And the lives that are supposed to be scripture are people that are lost, trying to find time. I believe it was important for us to understand the context of what I'm about to speak to you about. The key focus of my my sermon today will be on verse 32, where it says, It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Today, for the short time that we're here, I want to speak to you from the topic of mistaken identity. Mistaken identity. This parable is one of those um, parables that, um, if you uh, if you if you are brought up uh, in the church context, if you are brought up in uh, Christianity, you would have uh, heard this parable. It is one of the most popular. Parable that is also um, regarded outside of Christianity. In fact, there are times when uh, the, 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 the language that is used, the prodigal son, oftentimes people use, will use the same language in different situations where if someone may have left their job, they, they, they left that job and they went to a different company when they returned, but they told the prodigal has returned. The Bible doesn't use the language prodigal um, loosely, but for us, we we use the word without really uh, understanding what this word is, is speaking about. But in essence, what it's saying is that this is someone, this is the son who went away and he squandered his love. But but what I want to talk to you about is not so much about the prodigal son leaving and wasting his money. I will talk about that, but that's not the, the main point of, of, of this sermon tonight. For the past few actually, I mean, our last Bible study, we have the last few Bible studies, and the last few um, times that I've, I've studied to, to preach and teach, we have spoken about the, the necessity to understand our identity in Christ. I believe um, what one of the messages that I spoke to you about was in regards to having a firm identity in Christ, because everything that we do is based on our identity in Christ, how we live, how we speak, how we address people around us, and our or, or identity in Christ. In fact, in, in Bible study, we have been looking at the whole notion that from Isaiah chapter 43, using that as a brief text a few weeks ago, that uh, we were formed and we were created by God, and we were redeemed by Him, and He will provide and He will protect us because He values us. In fact, like, uh, you know, in the last Bible study that I, that I um, was uh, involved in, I mentioned the fact that we're called sons and daughters of God. And because we're called sons and daughters of God, it implies then that God will take of his children. But in this parable, we are seeing um, three main, uh, main characters, and there's other uh, supporting uh, cast members. So you have the crowd, you have the servants, you have the, the, the people who were there with the, the, the prodigal son when he was wasting his money, and you have the, the supporting cast. But there's three main characters here. There's the father, the, the two sons, the eldest son, the, the oldest son, and the younger son. And um, Jesus is, is teaching us, he's teaching uh, uh, he's presenting this parable based on the, the, the fact that an argument was um, was brought to him or, or to his awareness where if you start, if, if you read from the uh, verse 1, you see where it, it, it is said that the, the Pharisees, they, they were murmuring and they were, they were grumbling about the fact that Jesus was sitting with sinners. In fact, what, the, what it says, it says the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes, they grumbled. 
lifetime when he spoke to that nation, the fact that Zacchaeus, when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus was found himself in an interesting uh, situation where Jesus was now going home with a rejection. He was rejected by the, 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 the people uh, of his day. He was, because his identity was based on the work that he did, and the work that he did had formed. And because of that, the, the, it says that the people they murmured because Jesus went to be with the sinner. And there's something that I don't know what it is, but there is something uh, about the whole idea of identity that really resonates with me. Where I, I realize that I recognize that if you do not understand your identity, then you cannot live to your fullest. And, and often times, sometimes you understand, you understand your identity so much that your law is to, to, to send you to one extreme of normalcy. I'm, I'm going to make my point. So, when we think about this concept that we talk about identity, in, in, in America, you'll find a scenario where you have uh, uh, identity politics. You have identity that, that, that drives uh, the political system, the political machinery. It's driven by identity. In the sense that, let me give you an example. When, when you think about the, the election system, I mean, the election um, season that is, that is in full uh, you'll see where they'll say, okay, but the, the, the Democrats, they need the black vote. Or they'll say, oh, the Democrats, they have the black vote. But the Republicans, they need the black vote. Or they'll say, well, the Democrats, they need the, 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 the conservative vote. And the Democrats, and the, but the Republicans, they already have, and, and they start to place identity in the center. And all of a sudden, identity now dictates what the policies are. Because if they're trying to, to win the, the conservative Christians, because all of a sudden they're not trying to win Christians, they're trying to win conservative Christians, because they can care less what liberal Christians do. So if they want to win the conservative Christians, then they have to have certain things in their platform. And if you want to win the, the, the liberal Christians, meaning the Christians that go for anything, then they need to be in this case. So identity in this is plays a big role in everything that we do. Because we may not want to talk about politics, but politics are part with everything that we do. In fact, let's look at the history that is taking place here. As I said, we looked at that just before. There was a political establishment that placed identity uh, at the center of how they did things. Because here it is that, that uh, uh, the Jewish people that were being held uh, captive somewhat by the Roman Empire. You know, all of that what, what was, was interwoven into how they lived their life and the whole the, the, the expectations that they had from Jesus, where Jesus was expecting a Messiah that would come uh, from heaven and he would now be a militant Messiah so that he could reclaim their, 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 their true Jewish identity for them to have their own life. Identity is key. Identity is important. And as we talk about identity, now we look at the scenario, this scenario, this chapter in the book of St. Luke. And we see there's three parables in this one chapter. The parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin, and also the parable of the prodigal son. And in the two first parables that Jesus is expressing the concern of, of the scribes and the Pharisees and the people of the day, we're seeing where he's giving three examples of something that was lost, and as a result of it being found, then there was rejoicing. But oftentimes we celebrate and we rejoice for that. But I want to draw your attention to the sonship that is, uh, that is being affirmed here, which Jesus is outlining that the three things that were lost. Who were they? Where there were objects that had no, 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 they had no role in them, in, in, in them being lost. So in fact, the lost coin couldn't, couldn't care less because it's a coin. The, 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 the lost thing, it couldn't care less because it's just a, it's just a, a, a key. They didn't do anything uh, 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 to control whether they were lost or whether they were secure. But in this Third parable, we're seeing the prodigal son, where the son forgot his identity. He forgot his identity, and also he forgot his son's identity, and he forgot his father's identity. Mistaken identity, that's what we're talking about today. When you talk about mistaken identity, this is not 
that he will no live as a servant. Here it is, that you, you do not have to live as a beggar or a servant to the presence of God if you are truly his child. If you're truly accepted him and accepted that your identity is, 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 is grounded in Jesus Christ. So here it is, that the Son of the narrative, the, the, the narrative is saying the Son in the third person, but the Son in reality in the first person, he went back to his Father and he's saying that, he said, Father, he said, I acknowledge you as Father, but I cannot live in the identity of Son, I have to live in the identity of the servant. And so it is sometimes with, it is with us when we return to God, when we have, when we have done wrong, when we have gone astray, we return to God. We want to live and we want to come into the presence of God as though we are less than. But God says that my love is unconditional. I'm calling you back into my presence, into, my, into the kingdom, not for you to live as though you are a stranger, not for you to pray as though you are a beggar, not for you to pray in the story and the, 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 the authority that you have access to the Father, and he has called you sons and daughters and not a stranger. The whole the son, you find yourself in a position now where here it is that he's in the presence of the Father, but his identity, he has mistaken identity, because all of a sudden, it's been revealed that he says to his Father, you know, with you, you've never done this for me, but if he understood his role, and he understood who he is, and he understood his identity, then he would have realized that everything that is in the house was also in it. He has access to everything that was there. And, and I don't know who you are, and maybe I'm speaking to myself, but could it be that I'm in the presence of God? Could it be that I'm in church? And I don't even realize what I have in the presence of God. Oftentimes we look at, we, we, we look at the Holy Son and we say, oh, the Holy Son is, 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 um, is different. And we, 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 we have all these negative connotations. And, and uh, it, it, my, my, my fellow Jamaicans, or even myself, who would say that he was the biggest guy that money. So we use that, we use that language a lot. And we use it, and it's like, this guy has money, you know? Like, he, he's just trying to, he's just trying to affect and, and influence what his younger brother is about to get. Again, his body got his already at risk. Here it is that the eldest son, he was here in the presence of his father, but because he had a mistaken identity, he could walk with the, with the authority and the authority that I have because my father He forgot that he had to have told the hill to belong to him. He forgot that if the father had the fucking calf, it wasn't just for the father, but it was also for him as a son. And I want to remind you today that you may be in the presence of God, or you may let us confuse the presence of God for the church, because you may be in the church, but you're not in the presence of God, or vice versa. But the reality is, as you enter into the presence of God, you have to recognize that, that you're walking in there with this assurance that I have access to that which God has promised. Why by faith we will say that God will provide for us. Jesus, the Bible actually says that that all things work together for good, and all things can only work together for good if you have been identified with Jesus Christ and you have access to Jesus. Then you have this assurance that I have the authority to put it in the atmosphere and declare prophetically that God will provide for you. And believe it where it's not just something that you're saying, but you believe it with all of your heart. Let me let me go. Let me let me let me wind this down. The son, the prodigal son, the mistaken identity. The prodigal son, the mistaken identity. 
But the further in the context, we had no illusion of who he was. He understood who he was. He understood what he had in for his children. See, it is the beauty of our Father. He knows, he loves us unconditionally because the Bible declares that here it is that the Father, he didn't lose sight of his identity as dead. He didn't lose sight of the fact that he had a son, he had sons that needed him. So what does it take our lessons today from the Father? The Father shows us an example of what it means to walk in short of our identity, not with mistaken identity, not with a skewed view of our identity. But the Father remains resilient in who he is and who he was. The Bible says that when the Son went to the Father, the Son went back to say to his Father, Dad, I was wrong. I wronged you so much and I brought so much pain to you that I can't walk in my identity as son. I need to walk in my identity, my new identity as a servant. This is similar to Naomi in the book of Ruth. Naomi went back and she was so poor, she said, Don't call me Naomi, but call me Mom. But Jesus said that the, that the Father can treat the Son as our society would require him to treat the Son. He can treat the Son as all the older brothers expected him to treat the Son. Because the Father understood who he was. That he is a man of love and compassion. And the Father, how we need to look beyond the reckless, beautiful, and evil of my reckless son. And because my identity requires me to love unconditionally and to realize that my son, that everyone declares a prodigal son, is in my image. We're talking about the mother, the image of God. The father, I believe, as he looked at the son, he saw himself in the son. And if he saw himself in the son, and he realized that his image was on the son, his imprint was on the son, how could he then mistreat the son? I want to say to you today, as you look at people around you, as you look at those around you, do you see the image of God in them? They may not be living the way that God requires them to live, but when you see the image of God on them to treat them as soul, this is all God wanted to be treated. The practicality of this story is that well, there's so much practicality about it, but the thing I want to leave with us today is that we should not walk around with mistaken identity. Not like the prodigal son, not like another son, but like the father. He was a steward and a firm in his identity. And because he was a steward and a firm in his identity, he understood his authority, he understood his characteristics, he understood what was required of him. And as Christians, what I would encourage you to do is that as you stand in the the presence of God, and you are reassured of who you are in Him, and the, and the, 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 the mandate that He has placed upon you to live righteous and to do good, to live walk uprightly, to show mercy, to show compassion, be assured in your identity, knowing that I can treat people as their sin requires. And I have to treat them as God requires. 
God requires us to live a life of righteousness. In the book of James, it says that we can show in Christality. Jesus showed us the perfect example of God. Several examples that are these kind with sinners that we want. The fact that he went and he had dinner with Zacchaeus, that's another. The fact that he was the wrong man, my name, which is a nice story for another day. He was, he was regarded as an outcast, but he still welcomed her in. Because he understood his identity. He understood that you may be mistaken in your identity, but I'm not. And if I'm not, I have to treat you as my identity requires me to treat you. When you are in the service, and I've never been in the service, but when you are in the military, in your doctor, whatever it is, you have a badge that is attached to you. You have an identity that is attached to you based on what you do, who you are. And the reality is, if a doctor is in the midst of a crowd, even if he doesn't lie, he or she doesn't lie, and someone falls down, and they call their doctor and they neglect, the doctor can be perfect people. Because you refuse to live and walk in the same way. The question is, is there people in the house? Is there someone who is walking in the identity of Jesus Christ in the world? And if you are, then are you doing that which is required of you? Don't walk around with mistaken identity. Walk toward who you are. But God is placing identity on you. Because you are identified with Christ, you have access to the throne, you have access to the Savior, and you have access to the Savior. To pray the good news, to pray and intercede on God's good condition. Don't walk alone in the mistake of the Thank you, you guys, for the day. I trust that you were blessed today by the, the uh, worship service. I, I'm indeed in awe of the praise and worship uh, ministry of the will they ushered in the presence of the Lord. And I am in certainly, I am indeed blessed by the word that was spoken today, knowing that our identity is in Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you today, I actually I want to invite you to go ahead and call a number that will be listed on the screen. If you desire to be prayed for or to be prayed with, uh, we would like to pray with you. Someone is standing by. Go ahead and call the number that will be, will be listed on the screen and we will certainly be waiting for you to pray with you. And before we close, I want to say to you, uh, thank you. We appreciate um, those of you who continue to sow in the ministry. And I want to encourage you to keep sowing. The information will be posted on the screen. You can give by text. You can give by cash app. You can mail a check into the ministry. Whatever you do, uh, we are thankful, thankful for the seed that you continue to sow in this ministry. So have yourself a wonderful week. Go in the peace and the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have yourself a wonderful week. Be blessed. Amen.